Hey everyone, how you guys doing? All right, I uh, haven't been getting too many, but as expected, it's pretty cool out there. Not much is coming up yet. Um, as the spring moves in and things start warming up, we should start seeing more things. Um, if you uh, if you want to send anything, you'll see you'll get the email at the end. But um, feel free to send me things. I'll I'll, I'll plan on sending out uh, and. Uh, kind of like instructions, like a basis of maybe how you can try and take pictures to, to make them easier to ID, because um, anyway, let's move on. <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, all right, so this was actually submitted, uh, I think she sent it right before, probably a couple of months ago, so it's a little while ago. Um, I didn't get it into the last one that I had done. Uh, so April Wyman sent me this. Uh, this is a fun mushroom to find. Uh, if you've been if you've been to some of the meetings and seen some of these table IDs, you've you've encountered these mushrooms in the past. Um, <clears throat> actually, uh, Thomas Rail did a study using these fungi uh, and looking at the morphology and trying to look at different features and seeing if he could find some sort of genetic differences in this fungi. So this is an edible fungi. This is, you can see it's glabrous, meaning kind of smooth on the top. It looks like it's a little sticky. Uh, one of the really key identifying features of this one, when you start learning it, is this uh, dark velvety stipe. And so they call this one the velvet foot. Uh, and it's also known as Enoki. This is Flamulina volutipes. And if you look closely down here, you'll see, um, like you say, oh, this is an Enoki. This doesn't really look like the Enokis you find in the store. And that's because of the way that they grow the Enokis for commercially is that they put a, they put a collar on them and uh, the CO2 level is high. So they're trying to seek out um, to get, say they think they're behind bark or something and they want to get their spores out. They don't want to release their spores behind the bark. So they get grow longer, longer stems. And once they find the, you know, once they get out, then they can send out their caps. So down here, you can see what look like would be kind of enoki mushrooms you might find in a pack that you buy at the store. Um, I'm not sure which angle this was supposed to be, but um, they're all over the place in that picture. Anyway, they're a fun one to find. If you are planning to eat something like this, make sure you know it's a lookalikes. Um, Gallerina autumnalis would definitely be one you would want to avoid if you were going to eat something like this. And that they have a rusty spore print. This one's gonna have a whiter white spore print. Um, the Gallerina tends to have kind of like a ring, ring zone. It's not gonna have this uh, dark velvety stipe. And um, yeah, the gallerina tends to be more concolorous. I mean, it's kind of all orange, like a brownish, orangish brown color. Um, all right, moving on. John Klivanowski sent this one in. He found this at Greenbelt Forest Preserve. Beautiful mushroom. I think he found this one relatively recently. <clears throat> Always a fun one to find. Usually when you find these, they are nestled in big clusters of sterium Ostria or some other kind of sterium. Uh, and they're not sure if I'm not, I haven't seen any studies, but they think it might be parasitic on the sterium mycelium. I don't know that that's been proven or not. Don't really see much in sterium, maybe something like this little cap right here. So maybe there is something going on. Um, anyway, zooming in closer, it's beautiful pink color. Uh, the underside is a, a little bit blurry, but you can see it's got this very kind of cross veiny, irregular hymenium where the spores are produced. Um, and so that's pretty classic in the Thlebias. Uh, this was also known as Marulius incarnatus. So um, I think they're changing it to Bissomerulius, um, but I know I learned it as Thlebia incarnatus. Actually, I learned it as. Marulius incarnatus. Um, now it's Flebia or Biza Marulius. Um, so I tend to call it the coral pink Marulius, Marulius, which maybe I should start calling it the coral pink Biza Marulius. Anyway, it's a fun one to find and can stand out. 
All right, uh, Chris found this one in Rock Creek. Uh, this is a wonky looking oyster mushroom. I don't know what's happening here. I don't know if it if it was too cold or wet or some sort of virus has started uh, attacking it. Um, it's even got like some weird cross veining going on in the gills, which isn't really typical. Um, but this is uh, this is an oyster mushroom. Um, Pleurotus ostriatus. I I'm calling the 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 oysters winter oysters. That doesn't necessarily mean they're only found in the winter, but they do like uh, the cooler weather. And but you can find them in the fall and such. All right. Speaking of oysters, Marilyn Mendel found this tree, uh, kind of covered in them. You can see closer. It, Looks like the weather kind of dried up, and so the caps are starting to get a little um, dried out and on the on the edges. But they still look like they're in fairly decent shape. Um, a lot of times, when you find oysters in this shape, you kind of want to cut out that stipe there because it tends to be kind of tough if you're if you're trying to eat it. Um, I actually found uh, a tree very similar to this, like near work. Um, so I think some of these little warm spells really brought them out. And um, they were popping up all over the place. All right, Marilyn also found this guy, which <clears throat> looks like not much. Like, oh, great, some purple goop. Um, so it's fairly distinct, though. You know, this is a powdery purple. Um, she probably, these are the only photos she had sent me. But so it probably showed the remnants of uh, a roundish puff ball. And given this um, purple spore mass, which, you know, usually when you find your puffballs, they're pure white inside if they're young, and they will, uh, they, they call that the gleba. That's where the spores are produced is inside. Um, and as they mature, they're going to turn colors. Like sometimes you find the little guys and they might be turning greenish or yellowish. And then you've got two fairly large brownish mottled puff balls that can look quite similar. One's going to have more of a greenish spore print, and this one has more of a purplish spore print. This is Calvatia cyathiformis, uh, the purple spored puff ball. All right, Marilyn also found these two. Uh, this, you, you, if you've been in the woods, you've seen this. This is probably one of the most ubiquitous fungi around. <clears throat> Uh, so this is Trichaptum biforme. This is the uh, violet tooth polypore, and you can see it's still got some of that violet color going on. When these first emerge, they tend to be more pores, and as the spores are produced, uh, they erode away to these teeth, and this is where you get the biforme. Um, these are a little faded out. Sometimes they can have more color in them. Um, I found this growing on a cut log one time and it really hadn't started shelving out. It might have actually just kind of been my mycelium. And it was the most beautiful violet, dark violet purple, just covering the whole side of the log. It was really cool. Um, anyway, this other guy you may recognize from a couple of slides ago. This one is not as pink. It's a little bit faded out, but this is also your Flebia incarnatus or your coral pink bisomorilius. All right, Diane Lucas found this in the Falk Falkland Islands. Um, so I am not certain what species this is, but it sure looks like a, um, a, uh, a paniolus. Uh, so, they tend to have quite mottled gills. Uh, they can be a little bit brittle. Uh, they're going to have like a purplish black spore print. Um, there's another species like Satharella that can look very similar. Um, uh, also has the mottled gills. So that's basically like the spores are maturing at different uh, over time. And so um, as they mature to that black color, some haven't matured yet. And this is where you get the, the modeling on the gills. Um, and one of the favorite places for this uh, genus of mushrooms to grow is on dung. And I'm not sure if that is what this is right here, but if that's some dung right there, that'll be a, certainly a giveaway that this is some species of paniolus. They can be pretty hard to distinguish to 
to species, at least for me. <laughs> All right, April found this one at Longwood Gardens. I always like finding this one. Um, this is something they call the ceramic parchment. And uh, if you keep your eyes open, and now that you've seen this, Take a look around at some fallen logs and things. Sometimes it's a little bit more dispersed, so it's not all in one chunk. Um, this is a Lobulus frustulatus, but it's very common. And now that you kind of know what to look for, just take a look and you'll probably start noticing it. Um, but it's always a fun one to find. Um, it has a, um, a different species in the same genus that tends to grow more shell, shelf, structures um, and the underside tends to be gray like this and looks a bit cracked up. Um, I'm not sure if this one does it, but I know that the other species, um, subpileatus, it actually hardens the wood. So I, I'm not sure what's happening, but like those logs are known to last for years and years and years and only that mushroom will grow on it. Um, it's kind of interesting. I think this one will also do that too. So if you see it, maybe tap on that wood and see if it's like not really rotting away as quickly as you'd think it would. All right, Jennifer Hoyer sent this guy over to me. That's the only photo she sent. And this is zoomed in. You can see it's a little bit grainy. So I I don't know that I can even guess what's what species or genus that is. Looks like it has a ring. Couldn't tell you what color the spores are. Um, cap and stem, but uh, it's grown from the ceiling. She said that there was a slow um, toilet leak. She was a property manager and saw this at one of the properties. Um, so anyway, you can see much, uh, fungi will take advantage of any situation, especially you got some moisture working its way. Um, and when she sent me this, it kind of reminded me um, of something that I found one time. And this is in a hotel in Austin, Texas. And you can see it's, you know, nice new paint, new window. I think they had just renovated and they probably didn't seal around this new window. And so the water, you know, was able to penetrate and grew with, with um, some Pleuritus ostriatus growing right there in the hotel room with me. I told them about it and they made me move rooms. I told them it didn't really care. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, Julia sent this over, found it in Silver Spring. Uh, this is a pretty common mushroom. Um, a lot of times it'll have more color in it and zonations. This is a fairly young um, specimen. And you can see it's got, well, they in this photo, they kind of look like teeth the way that they're kind of have the eroded looking edges. But this is actually Lenzites betulina, the multicolored gilled polypore. A lot of times when you find it, there'll be much more regular um, gills. So I put air quotes because apparently these are elongated pores. So they're not actually gills. All right, I got this one a month or two ago. Mary Ellen Colleen sent me this, um, found it at Patuxent Research Refuge. And at first, I was like, if you don't see it, it's it's this guy up here. It's like, oh, that's just an old parishium, old lion's mane growing up there in that tree. <clears throat> and then you zoom in and it's like, wait a second, those teeth are round. And well, these are looking slimy, but that's normal. So um, I sent this to the identifiers and we had a hard time and Annie sent it to, uh, to Jacob and he said, ah, that's just some lion's mane. I'm still skeptical because <laughs> I've, ne I've never seen lion's mane with it. It's like it's growing from a flat surface. At least it seems that way. And these round pieces seem to be breaking off. If you look at like the little spots where these things are breaking off and they're circular. I don't know that I've ever seen circular teeth on a lion's mane. Anyway, possibly a herisium. Um, so who knows? If we ever find anything like this again, we'll have to see if we can get it sequenced. Send it to the DNA team. And uh, Roberta 
Artside sent me this. She found this at Meadowlark Garden. Actually, she sent me this today. So I don't know if she found it yesterday or not. But uh, these are some mica caps. So this is Cupronellus micaceus. Um, I consider this one of the signs of spring when you start seeing mica caps start popping up around uh, the base of uh, old stumps or dying trees, dead trees. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So this is one of the, this isn't edible. This you could, it must have dried out. And so they're looking a little worse for wear. Um, but it would have black spores if we were able to see under that. And these would deliquesce over time, meaning that they kind of erode from the bottom and um, kind of drip away their spores. All right. So another harbinger of spring. I found this um, right out in the backyard growing along a new um, raised bed I put in. So this is some Pazizia species. I used to lump these all into Pazizia badia or Pazizia badia confusa, but I'm not certain that that's what this is. Um, but when you start seeing ascos, I consider that to be another harbinger of spring. Um, you'll get quite a few ascos like fruiting in, in the cool weather in spring. You've got your urnula, your Pazizas, other ascos. In fact, morels are uh, another of the ascos like the spring, but they're going to wait for a little while till it warms up a little bit more. And they are also an ascomycete. The ascomycetes have um, are typically cup fungi, and their spores are produced in little tubes, <clears throat> as opposed to basidiomycetes, which are mostly our cap and stem mushrooms. And um, if you think about these cup fungi, if you think about a morel, Think about sitting all of these next to each other, which that would in, that would create the cap of the morel. So it's just a bunch of cups all kind of held off the ground from its type. Anyway, thanks for the submissions, everyone. Um, the forays will be starting relatively soon to go see what we can find in the spring. And if you get any photos, you can send them to forays at modc.org. Thanks.